we just gotta go hard. Uh, I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah, I just gotta go hard. Uh, I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Yo guys, welcome back. Hope you're all good. My name is Ben, owner of No Limit Cycling, and recently I've downsized on my Mega Tower. I've gone from a large onto a medium, and here's how I'm getting on with it. So recently we took a trip to the Alps. We went to Morzine, so I had a good solid week out there, bedding the bike in, getting used to it, and this is how I got on with being on a smaller bike, and here's my thoughts and feedback. So if I could just ask you all to do me a huge favor, if you haven't done already, and that's to hit the subscribe button. Just by doing that little thing goes a long way and it's much appreciated. So I've had a lot of phone calls at the shop and a lot of emails and questions to see how I'm getting on on a medium and to see if I've made the right decision. So I'm 5 foot 11 so on paper I should be riding a size large if you go on the comparison size guard from Santa Cruz. However, a lot of people this year we're seeing in the shop are downsizing, so I thought I'd try it out for myself to see how I liked it. So the main size difference is the wheelbase. A wheelbase on a medium is 30 mil shorter than a large. So obviously the more length on your wheelbase, the more stability you get on the rough stuff and the more space you have to maneuver on the bike. And with a longer wheelbase, it just means it makes it a little bit more difficult to corner on the tight tech trails. So my idea with having a smaller wheelbase bike, it would just make it easier to throw around and it'll be a lot more playful in the turns and I wouldn't have to wrestle the bike around as much as I would on a large. And in the last video, it just proved that a smaller short wheelbase bike is a lot easier to throw around, it's a lot more agile and playful. But the real question is, how would the bike cope and handle on a week in the Alps riding the French mountains? So for general ride position and climbing, I've got the bike dialed in, so I'm in a really comfortable position when I'm going up, and then just when I'm flowing around the trails, it feels really comfortable, really stable, and I, it doesn't feel short in the slightest. One reason that I really loved having a smaller bike in the Alps was coming to ride the off-piste and the tech. There's a lot of technical trails in the Alps, especially if you're riding off-piste, so that is the natural trails, there's a lot of steep, steep rooty trails that you've really got to maneuver the bike and on that the medium just felt absolutely unreal bigger bikes are a little bit harder to stop and a little bit harder to maneuver and a smaller bike just makes it nice and easy nice and playful so you can really chuck that bike and put the bike where you need it i felt really into the bike as well that's one thing i didn't feel on top of the bike i just felt like the bike was with me all the time on the descents and when i needed to push through into the turns and to get that grip i could really do that so nothing beats back wheel down the mountains many missions are definitely on when you get to the alps there's just endless miles of downhill roads beautiful s bends down the mountain and it's just really good to just pop on the back wheel so with a medium it's just a shorter back end by three mil so it just makes it a little bit easier to do that and it's still nice and balanced and feels nice and controlled doing that in the alps you do reach quite high speeds down the mountains there's a lot of wide open gravel tracks fire roads and descents that go on forever so i really got to test out that straight line speed and stability when it gets rough and rocky and it ticked the box once again it's nice and stable even though it's 30 mil shorter than the large it's still gripped it's still tracked it's still point wherever you want it to go and the bike would handle it so straight line speed yes climbing it ticked that box descending through the tight technical corners and over the roots it absolutely smashed it so for sizing on those aspects i absolutely loved if I was to compare it from the large to the medium, one pointer that I would say is on the more gradual, natural, wide turns. I just felt a little bit more comfortable on a large. I just felt a little bit cramped up on a medium. So 
I am running a 35 mil stem, which I've run across all my large bikes, but on a medium, one thing that I'm gonna try on this bike is to run a longer stem, even if it's to 42 and a half mil, just to give myself an extra little bit of room so I can manoeuvre around that cockpit to make, make sure that I can get my body weight central and where I need it when I need to get that grip. On the tech jumps, it's nice and easy to manoeuvre, it's agile, it's playful. I don't feel like it's too short for me. I feel like the bike is right for my size. Um, I've got longer legs than I have reach, so one thing that I'm gonna have to look at is the dropper seat post. So at the minute I'm running a Axis Reverb 170mm dropper. Brockshock don't do a 200mm axis dropper. I really love the performance of an electric dropper. They are unreal. But for this particular bike, I think I'm gonna to have to get a longer level post just because I just need more stanchion out. At the minute, I've got about three inches out on the main uh, diameter of the seat post, which it just gets in the way. I keep catching my saddle, uh, my ass on the saddle. So one thing that I'm going to do is probably run a one-up component dropper post where I can get away with running a 240mm in that medium. So that'll just make sure the saddle's all the way slammed. It's out of the way when it comes to the jumps and I can maneuver the bike underneath me. And then when it comes to climbing, I can get that nice, comfortable, high saddle position that I need. And just a little rundown on the bike. So I had the Mizoki shock on, on the rear, I had the bomber, and then I had the bombers up front as well, the Z1s. And I've got to say the Mizoki shock and fork just run absolutely unbelievable. I had the new ODI grips on. Um, one thing that I did find, I'm used to Bergtech. I love the Bergtech Super Softs and the super soft grips are really good when it's wet, so I never run gloves majority of time. But in the Alps, I had to wear gloves because the ODIs, the only thing is when they get wet, they get a little bit slippy. So for sizing out in the Alps, obviously you're just putting the bike on a chairlift, you're whizzing up the mountain and you're descending down. The sizing felt really good. I was really happy with the bike. I was really happy with the performance of the bike. The new SRAM transmission was unbelievable. Shifting was just bang, so responsive. When you needed it, it was there. It was bang, 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 bang. And then also I did take one big knock on that neck, but even so, took a knock. It just didn't even put it out of line in the slightest. So after riding the medium mega tower for a month, I can honestly say it's been such a good move. I was a little bit skeptical coming from after riding large bikes throughout the whole range onto a medium. I was a little bit unsure of if the bike would fit and suit my riding style, but I can honestly say for my size being five foot 11, and my riding style, it definitely suits me and the way I ride. This isn't saying that you should all downsize in the slightest, it's just saying maybe it's something to bear in mind. One thing, get to your local dealers, get a demo, have a ride. If you ride XL, if you ride large, downsize, ride a smaller bike and just see how it compares. You can always try and see how you get on. Sizing on a medium, for myself, I really, really like it and I've made a very good decision within doing that. My next bike that I'm gonna be doing or building is probably gonna be an e-bike because I'm really, really uh, liking the e-bike idea of an e-bike, especially going into winter. Here in the UK, there's a lot of slop on the trails. It's just more motivation to get out. You're not power sapping um, and using all your energy, just getting up to the top of the hill to ride the sloppy trail through the winter. So an e-bike is sounding pretty appealing to me, so stay tuned for that one. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please do give us a call at the shop or drop us a line in the comments. Thank you all for watching, take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one.